This is Twit. Is it is it the time? Is this the year for big updates to package managers? Right, because we have DNF five, which is amazing, by the way, and now we've got Apt three. Yeah, every everyone seems to be hitting uh, major milestones over this last year with their package managers. Um, but unlike uh, one package, this isn't an April Fool's joke. So the Debian project has released apt 3.0 this or er, this week with a, a nice new visual features. Visual features on a command line, you say? <laughs> well, I'm not talking about TUI, but there is still quite a bit you can uh, do to make command line output output look better with app 3.0 providing a new, concise, and well laid out command line output. So when you're updating, installing, or removing packages via the terminal emulator. So with that, new features, including things like a column display that will make it easier for users to scan for a package name, a new color support for removal and or red for removal, and green for all other changes. So you can, you know, more quickly at a glance, just take a look and kind of see what's going on instead of just all this, uh, all this scrolling past you. There's also a smoother install progress bar that uses Unicode blocks. And like I said, scrolling all the stuff going on, this app 3.0 has is now less verbose and offers more padding to make it easier to separate sections and extract the relevant information. And then there's also a new solver. So using the dash dash solver option, uh, so this new solver, it allows apt to fall back to non-candidate versions and makes auto remove more aggressive, keeping only the strongest automatically installed packages. So Debian users who are really looking forward to this can expect to see app 3.0 as a default in the upcoming Debian uh, Linux 13 or Trixie operating system, which is due out in June or July around there 2025. But if you want it even sooner, be an Ubuntu user because Ubuntu 2005 is expected to have that, which is also expected to release later this month. Uh, and you know, also, I believe, I feel like I tried out a beta of this, but maybe it was DNU5 or something, but I feel like I've seen this already before uh, this announcement and uh, demoed it, but maybe not. Uh, either way, it uh, I can't remember. So me being refreshed, looking at it again, it looks pretty slick because I am a Ubuntu user on my servers. So they're still on 2204. But if I decide to upgrade them to, uh, well, I like to keep on LTS. So I guess I, I don't know. I probably won't see it for a little bit, <laughs> but it still looks pretty nice. Hmm. Interesting. I am, Maybe. I am. I'm very interested by their new solver. I, I found a, I, I will add this blog post to the uh, show notes. Um, where apparently one of the devs is talking about what exactly it means that there's a new solver. And it is the it is the code that manages dependencies and figures out what needs to get installed to satisfy all your dependencies. And as you might, it, like if you think about that for a little while, that's not a trivial problem, particularly when you have things like three or four, a single dependency could potentially be be provided by different packages, right? And that gets really, really complicated. Um, and trying to sort all of that out to where it does indeed give the user the choice that they should have and not give them a choice when they should not have one um, can be can be really difficult. So well, a good example would be stuff. something that takes maybe FFmpeg and then it takes a specific version of libc and mm -hmm. then libc has got libraries it's based on and it just yeah, you could many 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 deep uh, or, then, or are you looking at like the Debian version of libc? Or the Ubuntu version. That's going to be Lipsy. one of them. Yep. Yeah. Or, or so something we see in Fedora quite a bit is you can install, I think FFmpeg is available from the Fedora repositories, but there's a bunch of the codecs that are disabled because of 
patent issues. And then you can go get um, you can go get other versions of FFmpeg, install them with DNF, um, and then so you might have multiple potential installs as FF, of FFmpeg. So how do you sort out which one you need? How do you do updates when that's the issue? So the yeah, circular, circular dependencies. Circular dependencies, yes. I always forget that you can also install dev packages with apt. Mm -hmm. So they would be in that uh, bundle. Yep. Yep. So cool stuff in there. I like it. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. Um, I hope you're not having the same problem Steve Lankus had. Who this uh, latest uh, version is being debited to or dedicated to? I hope not. I don't want anything dedicated to me yet. <laughs> not like that. Maybe maybe in another fifty years. But yeah, yeah, seventy. Um, so if one more thing, I'll point out: like if you want to, there is a screen, a side by side screenshot at the top of the uh, linked article, and I've got to admit, like the new Apt three output is way better than the Apt two output. Um, mm -hmm. much easier to look at and understand what's going on. Yeah, it's very similar to the output from Nala. Yeah, we won't need Nala anymore. Maybe. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you think about it, and like that is the sort of the ultimate um, win, if you yeah. would. Like, oh well, we, a, a, a package or a program, an application became a irrelevant rapper. because all of its best features got pulled in by the one it was trying to replace. Well, it's basically acting as a front end. Yeah, mm -hmm. a wrapper just to, to make it prettier for you. And well, no, it's pretty enough all by itself. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but it doesn't replace top grade. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little clip from our programming at twit.tv. For more, visit our website, twit.tv, or subscribe in your favorite podcast client. There's also a link somewhere down there. <laughs>